Hello and welcome to Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. This is episode 191, and I'm Patricia Steer, and Mark Sargent is here as well, of course. It's the Super Show. Take two. <laughs> <laughs> now we Sorry. have nothing to say. No, I'm sure we do. There's a lot to cover today. <laughs> yeah, we have a lot. We to have a lot about. of stuff. We have. Um, a documentary award in Russia for Flat Earth. Right. We've got uh, drama in Las Vegas. Yep. Lots of controversy about what that whole thing was all about. Right. Your opinions are welcome. We're not going to be showing any footage. There's nothing here that will be controversial in that regard. It's just varying opinions. Critical commentary, you might say. Yes. And we'll be going into the live chat and saying hello to everyone too. So, um, I don't know what we should talk about first. I think uh, Vegas might. We be should probably cover the Vegas thing the first most because important. in a everybody's week talked about it already. So yeah. it's not as if we are here to figure everything out. Everyone's going to have different opinions. That's all this is is going to be opinions. But some new things have developed, and one of those things you shot me about. Uh, I shouldn't say shot me. You nah. sent me uh, <laughs> about maybe a half hour or so ago. Receipt from Mandalay Bay Hotel. Right. Tell us what that receipt showed, Mark. The, again, in, in desperate times, people will do just about anything for money. And if you're a hotel employee making jack <laughs> and you have access to information that might be valuable to the media, that's what you're going to leak. And a guy that worked for the room service department, and I can't remember what they call it in the hotel industry. Is it guest services or yeah, guest services? Yeah, guest services. He dug up the information. Take two seconds to look up if room 135 on the 32nd floor actually bought anything. And it turns out he had the full blown receipt from a room service order back on the 27th, a day before the police even say he checked in. It's by that guy's name. And it was two guests that were there and they delivered it two full meals. And not only that, but then the, and, and a lot of this is coming, even though I give Alex Jones crap, uh, his, his investigative team has been looking into a lot of this stuff. He checked in on the 25th. So that leads more to the whole Patsy question. You know, if you're going to pin this on somebody, pin it on someone who's at the hotel. Why not a career gambler? You know, and I'm not saying he had a gambling problem, but say he was there with somebody else. You look it up in the records and you figure out how to pin him, pin it on him. Because everything that, that is tied to the regular story when it comes to this is wrong. The backstory is wrong. The weapons are wrong. The distances are wrong. Just about every part of that narrative, there's, there's big holes in it. And this, the, the, the room service thing was just one of the caps on it. But look at the other stuff that's come out recently. The, uh, the footage from multiple sources about flashes, you know, muzzle flashes that are being done by somewhere below the 10th floor on the other side of the building that's facing the, uh, the, the fairgrounds or whatever you want to call it. The cab driver's sound. That, have you listened to that thing yet? Yeah, that's a pretty compelling video as he holds that, his cell phone out the window. Yeah, and, and it's, it's a, from what I understand, it's a woman who was just doing, I don't know if she was an Uber driver or just a straight up cab driver. It sounds like she had a dispatch thing, so she was a regular cab driver. And she just, you know, didn't do a lot of commentary, just held the phone out the window and listened to this, heard the gunshots from up above, and then sometime later, you just heard, you heard gunshots that were distant. It wasn't an echo. Yeah, you could say the first couple things were echoes, but then without any prompting, it started over there first. You know, it started off in the distance where the shooting supposedly happened. But one could say there were two different areas where they were playing sound effects. Uh, it, it could have been, again, could have been multiple sound effects. Whatever, what I'm saying is, is that the narrative, what you were being told in the mainstream media is not even close to what actually happened down there. Uh, lone gunman, not a chance. Did, did you get a chance, by the way, to uh, look at the pictures they were releasing of the firearms used? Yes, and the firearm used wouldn't be the kind of firearm, from what I've learned from firearms experts like Brian Burton and yourself on your show yep. last night on TFR, yep. that yep. Would, it would be able to accomplish such a task without basically melting. Um, oh, yeah. Everything about it was wrong. Every, and, and I won't I won't bore you guys with statistics like I did on my show last night where I was going into grains and v muzzle velocity and, and feet per second, blah, 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 all that stuff. I'm with the, the bottom line of this, if you're not a shooter, is the AR-15s 
which were displayed. It's like, oh yeah, he a lone gunman with AR-15s. An AR-15 is not a big enough weapon to pull this thing off. It is not nearly, the the, the cartridge used is not nearly powerful enough to pull this off. And, and in fact, I challenge this to any law enforcement, any military personnel, any civilian shooter. And and let me give you the 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 layman's version of it, which is if I was given a million dollars to do this, right? What weapon would I use? The AR-15 isn't even on my top 10. Not even close. Of course, I wouldn't use a machine gun to pull this off. And oh my God, there's so many things wrong with the pictures they use. There's a scope on a weapon that you're going to be using for full automatic fire. You cannot actually physically look through a scope when it's on full automatic fire. The thing's moving around too much. It, it, a, a scope is made for single shots, you know, pow, pow, pow. It's not meant for full automatic fire. The the Air 15 going through that many rounds, because we're talking, if if you believe mainstream media, that there were, what, 600 people, 600 victims in total? You're talking at least 1,000 rounds, at least. And that's that's being conservative. 1,000 rounds through any weapon, eventually the barrel, whatever the barrel housing is, is going to catch fire or melt, uh, unless you switch to other weapons. It's just not possible. No well, supposedly way. Supposedly he no had way. a lot of weapons in his hotel room, and many people were saying, well, there's no way he could have smuggled those all in. Those weapons can be broken down quite small. You don't have to have a weapon-sized bag to put them in. And uh, they say he did it over a series of days, and he was supposedly there for a series of days. <laughs> they but, said he, I mean, yeah, technically you could do it in, a, right. in the afternoon if you want. Just take the elevator, you know, big duffel bags. People bring weird stuff into hotels anyway. But no one would have thought about this. This is, this is something that supposedly has never, ever been done. You know, nobody's opened up with a machine gun from a hotel room and just started spraying the streets for, for it. By the way, that's also another thing which goes against the, the grain, which is automatic weapons are not used in crimes, not not inside the states. You know, if, if you probably heard me say this on, on last night's thing. Look, if you're a Colombian drug lord taking on another Colombian drug lord, yeah, that's what Let you me do. Introduce you to my little friends. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Some anything from from a Miami Vice episode. It's going to be automatic weapons, but anything outside of that, you don't. And it's one is because automatic weapons are very hard to get, and they have extremely stiff penalties if you acquire one and don't have the permits for it. Now, you, Patricia, you could actually buy an, an automatic weapon this year if you want. You could. It would take a while to fill out the paperwork. You'd have to pay lots of money. I mean, you could. Buy a car for that amount of money. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. $20,000 plus, right? $20,000 easily. The, the, yeah, if, again, for you, the civilian mod, you know, the semi automatic one, you can buy for a grand or two tops. Full auto, you're looking at 20 grand. And that's because they have, they're extremely hard to come by. And anyway, there's, there's so many little things that are starting to fall apart with this story. And the story is only a few days old. Well, there's other things like the brother of the alleged shooter. The interview with him just seemed off to me. That rambling idiot. <laughs> and he didn't seem even sad that he lost his brother. He didn't say they weren't close. Um, he described the brother's girlfriend as a short person. He said he's a normal guy. He likes to eat burritos. Who says that about their brother? It was all bizarre. Now, I understand perhaps shock, but this went into the realm of a bad actor. Right. Um, it, to the me, it seems like, I'll just sum up what I think. I think some people did die. I don't think that this was uh, totally the way that the media has portrayed it though. There may be several shooters. Maybe this guy is indeed a patsy, but he was MK ultra into this sort of thing. Um, to do you just think he was an innocent guy in the hotel gambling and they pinned it on him? Or do you think there were some some things happening in his life where he was, um, I don't know, taken advantage I, of? If you're going to set up something like this, you I mean, it's easy. Let's put it this way. If it was me doing this, it's convenient to pick a guy in the hotel. Heck, you could even you could even make it to where he, he wins a little bit more, so he stays longer in the hotel. So it could be anybody. Then, if this if this scenario you're saying is true, if they want to make a patsy out of anybody. Forget MK Ultra. Any of us in any hotel at any time could have a crime like this 
pinned on us if they wanted to plan a crime like this. Uh, they men, being the men, powers that men, yes, you probably haven't wouldn't have much to worry about. But I think they were even having a hard time finding the demographic because his demographic is is on the outer edge. Yeah, I mean, people didn't really have much to say about him. A somewhat wealthy accountant. The brother says he didn't have that many friends. Not much history on him at all. It's almost like he's a ghost. Right. Yeah. And, and account Annie's 64. Yes. And, and sorry that the pictures that they released from the hotel room. Oh my God. They were, they were badly staged. I mean, you've got, you've got the curtains next to the window with a brand new hammer that you wouldn't have used for. Well, uh, no, but I, I was reading about the hammer. I think a hammer could break those windows. Well, no, but supposedly if a hammer is made out of, I think the material was porcelain, it can break open windows like that. Sure. But I can't remember. Again, not not to play the age card here, but he was sixty four, and he didn't look in particularly, you know. Buff. No, no, he wasn't one of those guys from the internet ads you're seeing now that, that have six pack abs that you could grate cheese on. He's not one of those guys. He he's just a regular old sixty four year old gambler. I mean, plus the the he's got two suppose you know two supposed AR fifteens with bipods, and he is bought his legs are laying in between them, and he's wearing loafers. Black loafers with white socks. I'm going. Okay, so you own tens of thousands of dollars worth of worth of armament and tactical gear, and you're not going to wear, you know, a full blown outfit. I mean, nothing. And there weren't enough cartridge casings on the ground. Uh, there weren't enough magazines on the ground. A thousand rounds at thirty rounds a piece, and I'm, I'm giving them benefit of the doubt. That's uh, that's thirty at least thirty empty mags. Plus, there was a full mag sitting there. Everything about that picture was wrong every single thing now what about the girlfriend um she's supposedly to be interviewed shortly oh they're gonna build that into something they're gonna right. try to spin this one because you know, it's like okay fine he wired some of his money to her you well, that would be somewhat normal in a relationship right uh, yeah sure why not and you know who, who knows what she was going to do with it does the where she was staying do they have extradition was she in a position to be extradited we don't know but there's there's too many questions. I've never seen anything, and you know, you you and I have watched a lot of these things transpire over time. I've never seen an incident where there's so many open ended questions at this stage of the game, mm -hmm. where the backstory isn't already filled in. Oh, yep, we knew exactly why I did it. Right, we've why been watching him. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, he was it was definitely you know under suspicion. The FBI had him under surveillance. Blah blah blah. The, the guy does not make sense. He does not fit. They still haven't figured it out. They, they still won't even talk about the the um, if there was a political motive. At one point, they tried to tie him to Islam. That's not sticking. So every, the, the media is just floundering. They there do not know what to do. There was a fake story trying to tie it to Flat Earth, but it was a somebody, an anti-Flat Earther created that story and tried to oh yeah that that was in, that was in, that was an international website and right it only there was only one of them it was sort of like the the google earth guy that supposedly yes was yes Earther. those stories when you well the google earth story if it were true it would have been good but um yeah. this story if it were to be pinned on a flat earth there is one of our i would say fears that somebody's going to try to pull sure. a hoax event or false flag etc you could have done it with this easily so why didn't you Again, you remember I said that flat earth is being allowed to happen. If you wanted to tie this to flat earth, you could have done it in two seconds. Would have been easy. It would be a lot easier if they tied it to a flat earther who actually had traction on the internet, though. You know, and had a, a yeah, but wh why channel not even and why not build a little fake channel for him or uh, we say all would know it was fake because we in our community pretty much. We all monitor other channels and our friends, you know, internet. But I mean, he could have been just a subscriber. We don't know all our subscribers. Right. It's true. That, that's what you could, have, you could have done with him. So what I'm saying is you guys want to look up some interesting things. You want a little homework to do, you know, after the show is over. When you, if, you, if you're interested in the Vegas thing, look up. And I've saved most of the videos on my machine now, which is amazing how many. A lot of are. videos I've shared on my Twitter have been deleted. So well, you know, if you want, that went into detail showing video. It's dangerous. If you want hard copies, let me know. I'm not going to post anything on my channel because YouTube is yanking them as fast as they as fast as they go up. Look up uh, Vegas Taxi Driver. Look that one up. Uh, uh, like Vegas Taxi Driver two shooters. That should still be up there. The look up anything that says Vegas two shooters or anything that says Vegas muzzle flash. Muzzle flash, right? Muzzle and, flash. Uh, 
the muzzle so, is such a, uh, it reminds me of a dog, a dog's muzzle for those who aren't into firearms. It's the, uh, the part the where blast. the bullet comes out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So when you fire a gun, uh, not to go into basic stuff here, but when you fire a gun, you're talking about an explosive charge. Uh, you're talking about fire, right? you know, let's say open fire. That's basically, it is, it is a combustible material that when compressed pushes the bullet out, but that compressed gas is on fire all the way out. And so when, you know, if you fire guns indoors ever, like if you're ever to shooting range, there's a flash you know, that's, that's gunpowder. That's how it works. And even if it's smokeless powder, uh, you know, it's, it, you're still going to get a flash. And when I was looking at the, when, when I, the early videos are coming up, I'm looking up this 32nd floor, I'm going, where is it? Because if it's automatic fire, you know, da, 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 that's pretty much the, the cyclic rate I'm talking about here. It wasn't super, super fast. Uh, you're waiting to see that pulse, that that flash up there. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm going, where is it? I kept complaining to uh, Master Gunner Brian Burton. At, well, at there the was this video of people who were on the ground saying that's fake, it's not real. Looking up at the Mandalay Bay, looking up at maybe what they saw from the ground were broken windows or a curtain blowing. They, they were looking up and they were saying, that, that there's nothing coming from there. Yeah, there's nothing coming from there. But then when all of a sudden, you know, like the, the cab driver and uh, the, the one uh, guy on the street and the, the, like multiple people on the other side of the Mandalay Bay Hotel, down, way down, like below the 10th floor, some people were saying seventh, some people were saying fourth, there was your flash. There was your, that's what, that's what I was looking for. Well, some theorized that that was an emergency light for a handicapped room that was flashing. You want to say, again, if pe that'll make people sleep better, fine. Mm -hmm. Then at that point, I would point them straight to the, the taxi driver's audio. What about this scenario? Now, the other day, I was thinking that this is a hoax. No one died, no one cried. Then I thought a little harder about it and looked at more information and thought, you know, this is one of those that they've created this but some people definitely did die and there were crisis actors involved. Right. Now I might think some of that is true, but instead of that guy being not even there at all, the, I think that guy was there in the hotel. They pinned it on him. Yep. The second person who was in the room with him might have been a person who actually killed him and then put on police uniform or whatever it was and, walked, and out then walked out of the room saying, yeah. everybody, you know, or something like that, uh, blending into the crowd like in a movie. And then uh, while the real shooters, uh, the powers that should not be people, Right. Um, we're doing the real shooting from elsewhere. Now, I, you've seen ricochets of bullets. Now, you I and have. I both saw the live live leak footage, which is not for the faint of heart. No. Um, but I saw the live leak footage, and it showed purported bodies and suffering. To me, it looked fake. But then again, I've never seen real people die, thank goodness. You're, you're going to be a little biased towards it. I can't confirm or deny anything from that video. I mean, they, the, I can tell you this, they look a lot better than the Boston bombing people. I, I, I can tell well, you that of course much. They I mean, they've learned how to do a better job. I, they did look, but, but that's not what I would pin it on. I'm, yeah, I'm a whole thing. If it is staged or, you know, put together by the powers that should not be, I, I, I don't want to call them the elite because there's nothing elite about them. Um, it's a better, it's way, it's tricky. They've, it's a country music concert. Right. It's definitely something that's going to attract in America more of a Republican crowd. Oh, it's a right wing um, crowd. No question. Yeah. Which is, you know, usually they would do something like this where it would be like an LBG tea crowd or sure. a crowd that was more you know, liberal chicks, although their country too yeah there's not a country crowd like a rock concert like a right. marilyn manson concert i mean something that they could use to their advantage right but um, shooting up a republican case, concert that's a lot of things don't make sense no. but i think if we had a think tank on how to do one of these things you'd want to do things that don't make sense because the people who break these events down are catching on to their games I have said several times over the last couple of years that ops, trying to do an operation like this is so, it gets harder and harder because more and more people have phones and more people are quick to use them. I mean, how fast are people getting up their phones? I mean, there's there's images from all over the place. Everyone from uh, from a cab driver to a security guard to all, to all sorts of fans. There were fans that weren't moving. 
Dude, they were there were fans literally as as the, the main crowd. They were up in the bleachers. There's fans that weren't doing anything. They're just filming this whole whole thing. And I heard happen. some of the audio. They were saying while they were filming, they were saying, "I don't see anybody injured. I don't see anybody. I see some people laying down, but they've got no blood on them. I just see people running." What I can what I can say to that is this. I can only tell you some of the things that I'm I consider myself an expert on, and one of them is there were things ricocheting off the ground no question the only problem with that is is even if you were using ricochets off the ground to to, to scare people and make it more realistic you're not going to be that accurate uh even the best hollywood guys when they're shooting spark guns are going to you know they get close every once in a while remember they're paid a lot of money to not hit the actors in this case with that many people milling around i think there were people that got hit do i think 50 people died no no do i think 500 people were wounded no not a chance uh but at the same time you know is part of the leak footage real it's it's hard to say i, I i've remember i kind of joked with you and i was wasn't being morbid when i said this it's like you know sooner or later they're gonna have to start killing people because yeah. it's just not you cannot fit it in fact it'd be easier from a production standpoint to actually take a few a little blood goes a long way and that's not being being glib or weird but it's true and that yeah. is you you take out a few people, that rumor spreads really fast. This, is true. this person died. Now, do I think that really tall guy with the beard, tree beard, whatever his name was, do I think that that guy was was had legit? a friend who died in his arms? No, he looked was awfully calm. I mean, such unless he was, unless he was on a whole ton of drugs, he seemed no, awfully calm. I held a guy, and a girl got shot in the head next to me, and it's like, all right, whatever. It's like put a shirt on, and, and he was then, smiling, duping delight. Right, right. So. Do I think there do I think there was something else going on there? Yeah, yeah, you bet. All I can tell you is that guy, the guy they pinned it on, is not the guy. And you probably you maybe not even seen the, the headline recently. Supposedly he filmed the whole thing. Supposedly, not only did he have cameras that he installed in the hallway to to let him know when SWAT was coming, but he supposedly had a camera in the room filming all of this thing in in the glory that it happened. Now, why he didn't live stream it, I don't know. Will we see that video? Oh, I it's a safe bet we're not going Maybe to. Maybe they're saying that because it's another little film. angle. It's an angle, yeah. Yeah. It's like, well, he filmed it, therefore it had to have happened. Right. Like, can we see the video? No, no, it's too graphic. So what are you talking about? It's too graphic. It's just him shooting out a window. So it, there's there's the, the what I know for sure is that the guy they pinned it on, not the guy. The weapons that they say were used were not, not the, the weapons. weapons, not the weapons. The floor that they say it happened on, not the floor, but strangely mm -hmm. enough, it was really the 33rd floor. If indeed they don't count the 13th floor in that hotel, right. they say it's the 32nd floor, but a lot of places don't have a 13th floor, especially somewhere where there's a lot of superstition about numbers like Vegas, where people gamble. Right. The, oh, right. <laughs> Superstitious Vegas. The, uh, a lot of the police scanner and i've saved i've downloaded because i i had a funny feeling that youtube is just going to start ripping this stuff down i've downloaded just about everything i could that seemed seemed kind of interesting to me and one of them was that the police scanner uh audio from a lot because obviously not all the cops were in on it but it but it does also put into question why it took them so long to get up to that room unless there was a cover story that went wrong. I think this uh, something went wrong in this operation and they were trying to recover from it and they they had to get all their ducks in a row because there were too many cops that were saying that there were not just two but three shooters ro roaming around. One from the hotel, one at the place, at, on one end of the place and one towards one of the exits that were like that was like popping off people as they were heading towards the exits. And there's there's witnesses are saying, you know, and how that goes against the narrative. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, lone gunman, lots of people dead, blah, blah, blah. You don't want to let it, you don't want to let witnesses talk to cameras and say that in fact it was a red ice interview, which was interesting. They were one of the ones that grabbed that that girl with the red hair and, and she's going, Oh yeah, she's there's multiple people. One of them was was waiting for us at the place. Hmm. So if it was a multi-person operation. Who the hell was, you know, who benefits?
Now, the, the guy that they are pinning this on, or the guy who did it, depends on how you want to look at it, he right. supposedly had multiple transactions of $10,000 or more involving gambling. And when you do that at a casino, they've got to keep a record of it. Right, right. And uh, so they're, they're, they're saying that he had this issue. They're really focusing on this man and the, the Filipino woman, his girlfriend, and the transfer of money. Uh, it might be just sleight of hand to make us continue to look at that angle and not look at all of these other things which don't make any sense. They don't. They don't so make any what's sense. The, what's the reason for all of this? People always say, oh, it's for gun control. Uh, and to gun, keep us in fear. Gun control. Yeah, fear beat maybe. I mean, right, well, fear because beat, the gun control fear. thing doesn't work because of the crowd that they were shooting into. And the fact that, that automatic weapons were used. Right. It's brand, it's brand new. Automatic weapons have nothing to do with gun control because they are heavily, heavily regulated. But I, we I, did see news coming out immediately after with Congress people saying that they shouldn't, there shouldn't be laws that allow people to modify weapons and make them automatic and boom, immediately with that. So Yeah, well, that's, I think, part of me thinks that the weapons used were the wrong weapons. Meaning, again, I, I, I criticize operations, but I think the weapons that were chosen for this, real or not, sound effect or not, were the wrong ones. Meaning the, the, the deep belt, the, there's certain things They're that give it not that dumb, though, are they? Uh, I, it depends. It depends. Who, They'd hire again, experts it, it comes, in ballistics. It to comes do down this. to your weakest link. And that is, you know, if you, if you hire like a, like a, a merc, and yeah, it's like, oh yeah, bring your own equipment. You're going to be shooting from this angle and you know, you're going to be, it's like, hey, can I bring my own stuff? Yeah, sure. And maybe he didn't read the debrief or, you know, the briefing on it. Maybe he screwed it up, but they, he, there were so many rounds being fired. It eliminated, okay, one, it's like, okay, you know, it's an automatic weapon. Two, you're not using small clips. You're using a drum or some sort of belt fed and you're using a higher caliber weapon, which is like a 7.62, which is a beefy weapon expensive military hardware and th at that point you're ruling out gun control goes out the window because like a belt fed machine gun <sighs> the average person i could i would be hard pressed give me fifty thousand dollars it would still take me a long time i'm thinking of rambo with that big belt that's that's what it is that's the type of Bullets. weapon you're talking about it we're talking about an m2 in fact brian burton mentioned to me when he was listening to the audio and we're talking about a guy who's listened to a lot of automatic weapon fire I, I'm no slouch myself, but this man actually had two of these things on his tank, and it's called an M240, which is a 7.62 belt-fed machine gun, light machine gun. Uh, they run about $25,000 on eBay. You can go buy one right now. Of course, you get to you know, apply for it and get all, get approved. But they're talking about bump stocks now. Bump stocks so are a bunch modify Bump people. stocks on an Air 15 are ridiculous. It is. But a they're talking about that. They're continuing to focus us back yes. on this shooter, this guy. Now they're even saying that he was with some mystery woman, not his Filipino girlfriend. A, a bumper stock. I'm sorry. A bump stock is ridiculous. Here's why. Bump stock is is the whole thing is based on recoil. It throws your accuracy out the window. Yeah, you can fire real fast. Good luck in aiming at anything, especially plus. In, in fact, I was looking this up just to refresh my memory. The maximum range for an AR-15 effective kill range is 300 yards. Plain and simple. Now, I had a friend that came back at me last night and goes, well, no, you know, they can hit targets at 1,000 yards with special rounds. I'm going, yeah, single shot, 1,000 rounds. Yeah, if you want to knock over a paper cup at 1,000 rounds, fine. Is that the weapon you're going to use? No, you're going to use a 7.62 or bigger. And the only... Automatic weapons you can get in that caliber is going to be a 7.62 for to get the job done. And that's what I think was used on the fourth floor or the seventh floor. That whole AR-15, and I knew it. I knew it, I knew it the second they were like they were releasing the weapons and going, boy, you better not fall that because AR-15 is the only thing they've ever mentioned in every shooting for what a couple of years now. It's like, oh, it's the AR-15. Oh, it's the AR-15. But they still wouldn't uh remember how corporations kind of win the day. They still won't tell you what brand it was. Why not? Because no corporation is going to let them do it. They'll sue. They're, you know, because it could have been Colt. It could have been Bushmaster. It could have been Remington. It could have been whoever made the clone for it. But they didn't say who, whose it was. They just said it was an AR-15. Because they don't want to damage that that American corporation. Ugh, it's irritating. Sorry. It's my 
Well, I mean, I appreciate your knowledge in this. And also for those who want to learn more about what you've been talking about, uh, Master Gunner Brian Burton was on TFR last night, yeah. the 3rd of October, 2017 on Truth Frequency Radio. And it is on Mark Sargent's channel. And it's a really good show, the, the show that he always does, Strange World. But this was very much so devoted to the shooting in Las Vegas. Right, right. And look, can so I, some can of I... what you talked about is a bit outdated now because things have changed, but the basics are there. About yeah, the, the, the what I, let me just get the when i say the gun is too small what i'm saying is the ar-15 fires a bullet that's so small that it run basically runs out of gas by the time it gets there by the time it gets there oh yeah it may break the skin you know it may punch a hole in you but i uh, yeah a lot of people will be going to the uh, to the emergency room for stitches i don't think there's gonna be a lot of they're gonna be dying not so just, so anyway. they're telling us it's the 32nd floor because right. the thirteenth floor thing, it's really the thirty third floor. And they know that we're conspiracy people, and that sure. we'll focus on that. Sure. And maybe even the media will focus on it, and we'll go chasing. On we'll go on a wild goose goose chase. Yeah. Well, meanwhile, oh, the, the real shooters, uh, we, we like James Bond kind of people who will never know who they are. Right. The, again, you there will be more videos that will come out. Uh, probably, the, some people are probably holding on to them because they want to sell them to media, which is unfortunate because if you sell them to the wrong media, they're not going to be released. But I'm sure there's some footage out there of some decent stuff where people just aren't aren't releasing yet because they don't know what to do. But if, you, if you're if you listening to this now, <laughs> release it. I Send it to me, msergeant23 at comcast.net. I'll, I'll find an outlet for you. The Hoary Sheet Show has a video on his channel that's really pretty much gone viral. So you might want to check that one out, The Hoary Sheet Show. Um, now, the suite in which the uh, the suspect was supposedly on on the 32nd floor, a lot of people were saying two windows were broken out. That doesn't even make sense no. uh, because it didn't look like they were from the same room. But that's been confirmed to be the same suite so is it the same suite really that's what people are saying now because that's a corner suite if that's the i case. would need to see a floor plan on that because there's because we're talking about windows on two different walls you know one uh, one on this side one on that side and in our live chat alex says 33 in the headlines today they said he purchased 33 guns over the past 12 months whatever i mean they, they keep changing the story initially but they're just they, playing with us there come yeah. on <laughs> initially there was 12 guns in the hotel room then there were 18 now there's 23 i think 40 something in total and 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 how many of them were automatic come on you, you're trying you're basically you're trying to pad his entire his entire story with weapons but you still haven't gotten into his personality yet which is like, look, that's that's the key there. Is but no one cares. It's like fine. No, they're saying he, he the profile of a man, a descent into madness. So they're what? What do their job on him? Wait, the prescription drug? I don't care what you're on as far as mood stabilizers or antipsychotics. I don't think one of the side effects is going. You know, setting up a hotel room as as a gun shop, and then deciding to attack a country music show. Uh, sorry, it doesn't, it doesn't even make any. And wearing loafers, you know, wearing loafers I mean, while that's you're doing a fashion it. faux pas, right there. So. Oh my god! <laughs> From a shooter standpoint, yes, absolutely, it's a it's a faux pas. Right. Loafers, come on, during a, a mass killing, that's just never after Labor Day. Oh my god, it just simply isn't done. Yeah. Now the thing is, is we're not making light of the deaths of people or potential deaths of people. I'm just saying it to be, I don't know. Because this is so crazy, sometimes humor is a natural reaction. I think but a lot of us don't have don't that. don't keep digging. You know, the, the media will run out of steam on this one in about a week. Oh, and it, there'll be something else in the headlines. Something Just that else. No one's talking about Ariana Grande in Manchester anymore, or fill well, in the blank all the other events. But no, nobody's talking about Puerto Rico, and that's not even a country. Oh, yeah. And it, see, the thing about this, people were saying this Las Vegas thing is a distraction from what's going on in Puerto Rico. I wonder why. I mean, Puerto Rico is a mess, but it's not like there were, we were pointing conspiracies at Puerto Rico or we had anything on it. And the yeah. thing about a country music concert, um, the people that were there, there was a lot of garbage and trash on the ground. And I guess that might be normal for outdoor concerts. I don't think I've ever been to one since the 80s. Um, a lot of people there were drinking. 
Oh my god! Be assumed. I Vegas. love the people running with alcohol. In fact, one of the famous fence I've scenes. Gotta save my cup. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Um, one of the famous uh, uh, still shots of people like jumping the fence because it looked yes. kind of chaotic. There was one guy straddling it and one girl. I'm pretty sure the girl still had the cup in her hand. It's while like, she was, honey, I'm gonna jump this fence. Bullets are flying at her head. Here, hold my cup. <laughs> yeah. Well, you don't, you know, when you first, and I know people are criticizing, it was a weird crowd to shoot at because it, well, yeah, it wasn't like Ariana Grande where all the girls were sober, you know, th at least I think they were sober. Whereas this group, I mean, they were pretty tanked. It was a mixed as, bag as, of ages as well. Right. And so the, a lot of people were, you know, standing around. Plus we're talking rednecks and gunfire well, is there's nothing. There's people who like country music who aren't rednecks. But well, I will you know have to I mean. add that I don't like country music at all, so... But there was a, you You guys will see it if you get a chance. There's like a group of like seven or eight people as everyone's like running around chaos. They're sitting, you know, on the cement, just kind of looking around, smoking and drinking. And only, only when a ricochet goes right by them. And there's <laughs> no like, way to fake that is what you're saying. No, 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 no. You have to shoot something at the no, ground. There were real now, balloons you, flying, real deaths, probably not as many as the amount of people that were there. You just need a couple of crisis actors, people to scream and panic and run to get the ball rolling. Uh, or do you think no crisis actors, just real shooters, but not the guy they're pinning it on? Not the guy they're pinning on. I'm sorry. He's just the wrong guy. I did. Maybe, maybe they were desperate or maybe when they were, maybe literally when they're looking through the hotels, like couples, couples, too young, you know, lots of out of towners. Remember, Vegas is like people from overseas that come to Vegas. It's like, nope, nope. We we need somebody white, male. It's like eh, sixty four. All right, let's do it. And I'm sorry. Well, uh, I wonder 60, how long I, they've been waiting to do this, waiting for that right kind of person to check in and to pull this off. And why the Mandalay Bay? Because the Luxor with the pyramid is right across the way. Sure, Another sure. nod at us, the conspiracy realists. Maybe. Maybe I it's we're going to be chewing on this one for a while. But then again, Vegas in general, the whole place is, uh, you know, ripe for the picking when it comes to things that conspiracy realists look at. Yeah. So. Yeah. So I I am. Um, Let's go in the I, live chat and see what everyone is saying and what everyone is thinking. Uh, Karen Kay says he used some horrible crisis actors this time. Rune Thornson says so people didn't die. I mean, again. Alex Aquarius says, I was born in Houston and never have liked country music. So Alex Aquarius and I should do a video together since we live in the same city. We'd need to meet Alex. Let's make that happen. Um, Omar Corona says, the imaginary ISIS, meaning there was an initial attempt to pin this event on ISIS. Uh, James Hicks Boson says, all music is brainwashing. Well, is classical music brainwashing? I think classical mm. music in general is great for... Uh, your brain kind of learning patterns and numbers without realizing it. And it's beautiful. Uh, Brandon Esteban is here. Who's your flatty is here. Uh, Ginger Sugarbush is here too. Who says there's a time and place for all kinds of music. I shouldn't be so hard on country music. I was a country music DJ at one point in my life, 1986 uh, till 89, something along that, those lines, in Turlock, California, which is near Modesto, California, the Central Valley. I didn't like country music, but I wanted to um, move on in my radio career away from working for my father in Michigan. So I moved to get to California. I had to move to somewhere where it wasn't that prestigious in the radio biz, not a big station. So I ended up in Modesto slash Turlock. And I had to play country music and the people were really nice, and I actually got to like a couple of country artists. Uh, Hank Williams Jr. was pretty good. Excuse me, Hank Williams Sr. was pretty good, not Jr. Um, uh, Merle Haggard. I mean, there's some there's some good people. In, but usually for me, it was the older stuff, not the modern country that was coming out then. Sure. So, uh, And Tom Petty. Now, there was an interesting overlapping story that got – dusted due to the fact that this event came out with Tom Petty reported dead and then reported that he wasn't dead. Right. And uh, he's not country, but he's, he has a, like a folksy aspect to him. A couple of people are mentioning Tom Petty here. Um, now people 
have said that in any of these events, and we've all noticed it, you you end up in a comment thread on Facebook or something on YouTube where people say, well, I my cousin's brother, sister knows somebody who died or who was at Sandy Hook or who was, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Uh, I actually have the same story. I know someone who is very high up in a company that owns a casino in Las Vegas and he told me, and he's not at all involved in anything conspiracy, he told me that one of their employees died at Mandalay Bay. Doesn't work for that casino, but was there for the concert, works at this person's casino, which I won't name. And um, so he said that one of his employees died. So uh, the thing about that is, how do you fake that? Now, I don't think this person's lying to me because they don't really have a reason to lie to me. So if there is a person that he doesn't really know because it's a huge company spanning all over the United States and into Europe, um, there would be an employee number no longer active, a check that no longer will be cut, a job that has to be filled eventually, funerals, et cetera, et cetera. How does one, if it's a fake event, have that employee disappeared? Or do you think that all you would need to do is just tell somebody that so and so died? And but no, there'd have to be background. Think of any job. You got it. You got to create a backstory for everybody anyway. Right. What right. makes this guy different from any of the others? You've got to put the gap out there so that if anybody checks, they can look and and see. Oh yeah, this there's a record of this person working here. I saw a comment from Amber Plaster, a flat earther and singer who was saying that she knew somebody who said that somebody died right next to them and got blood all over them. Um, I'm not saying Amber's lying. She said she knew somebody, but everybody seems to be saying that yeah, yeah. somebody if it's who died. Hand, sorry. It, that's, that's how it goes. I knew a guy who said he knew a guy. You know, my brother's cousin's former roommate right. said that he saw Ferris pass out at 31 Flavors last night. <laughs> sorry. Exactly. But that doesn't mean that, you know, perhaps... Indeed, we are saying that there are people who really did die. So some of these oh, sure. brothers, cousins, uncles, aunts, friend twice removed is actually dead. Oh, yeah. Again, if, if they if they did that, and, and this is me not being weird, but that would be the one thing they got right. And that is a little blood goes a long way. Right. Because everyone's going to say, oh, yeah, I was next to a girl who actually held somebody's hand while she died. Right. <sighs> Horrible. Brian McCarthy says, I think the number of dead injured was exaggerated. A lot of the people supposedly injured were probably actors. They had a drill at the concert and uh, shoot a few of them and fake the rest. There you go. I mean, if you're going to, yeah. let's, 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 why don't you add a new wrinkle to it? If you're going to do crisis actors, right? They sign up, you tag a few of them. Who are they going to tell? Exactly. Who are you going to go to? It's like, well, they told me to be a such and such. And it's like, because that report, you, they're going to be watching all of that. And what about an angle that there was somebody in that crowd that they wanted dead? And they did this whole thing to kill that one person. No, you just blow them up. That's, um, you just bring a backpack in. You don't have to, uh, you just drop yeah, the backpack and, and off, days, run, go 30 paces. And, and we've it. all seen spy movies, which aren't reality, but they're, you know, if somebody wants somebody dead, you just hire an assassin and then they're dead. So, sure. or walk up and I mean, yeah, there's there's all sorts of you walk up and inject them with something. There's you can do it quietly, you don't even have to do it noisily. I'm saying if you're going to do a machine gun, you're not doing it from a hotel window, you're going to get you're going to get pretty close because you're going to lose a whole bunch of firepower, a lot of a lot of energy from that distance. Hmm. That's just me though. But again, I put the challenge, show, find me any law enforcement, any soldier, anybody that shoots and tell me that that's what they'd use to pull this thing off. No, they're not going to do it. Uh, Plasma John Doe says the main thing is they want to push background scatter detecting machines, x-ray machines. Yeah. Like and I actually. Scan at airports, they need to move inventory and increase stock prices of companies. They're already there. I mean, they're not going to, they're not going to put scanners at hotels like casinos because that goes against the whole. You know, because people, it's airports is one thing, is it's a one way trip, right? You go out and, you know, it's, it's, you only have to scan once or one, you know, so often, however long the trip is. But if, if you put scanners like a casino, 
oh my God, people are coming in and out of there all the time. Well, there should be tons of footage from the casino of the guy there gambling. Uh, yep. I think he played slot machines from what the brother said, probably gambled in other areas as well. Casinos are notorious for footage. Oh, yeah, they have, they to have, have that tons. because people could be cheating or, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, that was the, the Burglarizing or robbing the place. Yeah, the attorney that that uh, he had a great quote. He goes, "Hey, they have tons of cameras, and they're not for your safety. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> it's to make sure you don't walk away with money." And also in the hallways of the hotel. Yeah. They're, oh, I don't know. know. What about this, going what, to be what, about, what about the security guard that was shot in the leg on the 29th okay, yeah. or thirty Why something? Why did the shooter shoot the security guard dead? He's about yeah. ready to kill fifty people. Why yeah. did shoot him in the leg? Yeah. Why that shoot makes him? In the no leg? sense. And 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 leave him there. Here, I'm going to shoot you in the leg so you can go get some people to take me out. Yeah. Um, let's see. Five Arts Liberalis says on CNN, they said the shooter fired for nine to 11 minutes. Do you know what, by the way, the, I just thought of that. As you mentioned, the um, the, the the guard, why did you shoot him in the leg? You know what that kind of reminds me of? The Lee Harvey Oswald story. You A lot of people don't remember that he supposedly walked up to a uh, patrolman that was sitting in his car and shot him. Shot him dead in his car. Those sorts of stories are to show how callous and cruel somebody is. Right. And then he went to a movie theater afterwards. But doesn't that sort of so the same? Go. It's like, and oh, yeah, I sh shot the security guard, <laughs> then went to his room and yeah. set up shop, You right. know, put on his loafers and got ready to unload a thousand rounds at age 64. I'm sorry. I would have I would be worn out trying to unload a thousand rounds. Uh, Alex Aquarius is saying they say that he had a suite and the room next door so that's maybe the reason why we have two windows broken out two rooms he bought two rooms and yet when you listen to the police scanner audio they weren't confused in the slightest about what room he was in well in a situation real or even fake there's going to be a lot of confusion but the fact that there was a drill in this vicinity before this happened why why always a drill why yeah, yeah. I mean, that's something you've got to look at. But then again, the powers that should not be know that we have been saying even since 9-11 or maybe before, oh, there's always a drill. So of course they'd put a drill there because it just, it, half of the time, I think that they love pulling our strings. Yeah. They love winking at us in a way, looking at over at us, dissecting everything and saying, here, I'll throw you a bone. Go off on this wild goose chase. On on one sense, and I we, we probably shouldn't dwell on this too much longer, yeah. which is, look, in a week from now, <laughs> no one's even going to talk about this. Except Mainstream the media will, will... Who lost we, someone. Well, except those people. And there'll be some memorials here and there, and that one Marine will be considered a hero for driving people. So injured. you think that there's no way that no one died? I think that and it wasn't, and I got to correct in case uh, uh, the Hori Sheet Show was was listening in chat. I'm not talking about ricochet sounds. I'm talking about actual ricochets. I'm watching them mm. happen. I look. I've shot a lot of things, and I know a ricochet when I see it, and I know how people react when a ricochet is right next to them. And I saw two of them. Mm. One took out a cup, spun that thing around, and the other one was straight off of concrete. And there's. If there's ricochets, there's going to be, at the very least, there's going to be wounded if, um, if there's ricochets. No, does that mean that there were cl carefully placed shots? Remember what I was saying, you know, eh, where are the crisis actors at? Oh, yeah, I never did like that guy. <laughs> you know, stuff <laughs> like that. True. If you've got crisis actors, they are in harm's way. They're in harm's way. They signed no. up for it. They have no place to sue. They probably signed the waivers. No, they'd uh, be upset, mind you. Now... Uh, Nathan Oakley and Timaeus are talking a little bit about uh, the fact that the purported shooter checked in with his girlfriend's ID, which is also weird oh, when she's oh, in the oh. Philippines. Why didn't she have her ID with her? Is this even real? Is I, this fake news to throw us off the track? I forgot. There was one other thing, and that was, in fact, I just found this out before I got on with you, and that was he was still trying to rack up hotel points. Okay, like, so that makes absolutely no sense. Exactly. Like he was Why? like try, like he was trying to make sure that he was maxing out his hotel points. It's like, because <laughs> you're gonna cash him in when? Are they transferable? <laughs> exactly. In another dimension? Yeah, exactly. Because, uh, yeah, yeah. It's like, no, no, you're not. Yeah, he was he when was you do this. If you're a person who actually gets a bunch of firearms into a hotel and makes a sniper's nest and goes through with a plan like this, you know you're not walking out alive. No. 
No, you're not walking out alive. It's just so a you don't care time. about anything. Hotel points, you don't care. Room service, oh yeah, you may order it, but you're not going to go cheap. You're gonna you're gonna pop for a whole bunch of stuff. Poor Mandalay Bay. I've stayed there before uh, accidentally because the place I was supposed to stay something weird happened uh, quite a long time ago. Anyway, I'm not a Vegas person, but I've been there a couple of times. Mm -hmm. um, it's an okay place. It's not super luxurious. It's fine. It's fine. Um, I don't like Vegas at all. I don't just don't. I think living in Vegas might be very different than actually be. I'm just not into the sterile casinos and the smoking and right. the gambling and the buffet. And uh, I have seen a few shows in Vegas that were really good. But Vegas is there for one reason and one reason only. It's to get your money. Yeah. Plain and simple. And the, the in fact, even if you're good, you're not, the, the longer you stay, the, eventually you're going to lose because the uh tie goes to the house mm. statistics so you yeah, think like you can win at vegas well there's two ways one is don't ever gamble number two is if you ever gamble and you ever win walk walk away, away. walk away as soon as you do it but right. that's not the personality type anywho all right so we'll, we'll be we'll be digesting this over the next few weeks well and, i and... have a question to ask our live chat and i've got my phone here uh mm. the question is we're going to use the numbering system of one i guess uh, do you think, what, how can we phrase this? Do we think that people died or do we think that it's, do we uh, think that there's way more, way more to the story? Do we think there was more than one shooter? Okay. Put a one. If you think there was more than one shooter. Uh, uh, sure. Put a it's one. As easy as there was more than one shooter. I just want to take a little poll. What are we thinking? More than one shooter. Put a one. And put it too if you think the whole thing is fake and no one died. More than one shooter, put a one and a two if you think the whole thing was fake. And nobody See died. We've got we've got Chris Topher saying one, more than one shooter. And a couple other people. Martin Leadke says more than one shooter as well. Uh, Flattastic also putting a one. Pilar Falcus says one, my one contact. My one contact is not really working that well. Oh, I'm not even going to read all the names. Everybody is saying one. Yeah. But there's, too, there's too many things. Look, Dina I is mean, saying it's completely fake. Couple twos saying it's completely fake. Uh, between, we've got a preponderance of evidence for ones, but the twos are catching up. Couple question marks as well. I Oh, <laughs> we've got the number six for some strange reason appearing here, but it's funny. By the um, way, for the people that say never been to Vegas, yeah, you think Vegas is bad? Try Reno. Oh, Reno. I've been to Reno before as well. Reno is somewhat depressing. Yeah, I found it to be depressing. I lived in Northern California, and going there was not that big of a distance, and was like a you know little fun trip you'd take occasionally. And I knew somebody who lived in Las Vegas. Boy, it was quite a long time ago, before the year two thousand. Was it Elvis? And, no, it was Elvis. <laughs> He is alive. Uh, no, but okay. I went and visited their house. They lived in a very, very beautiful, large home in Las Vegas. But still, it, it, Vegas is just the weirdest place with the airport so close to the Strip. The only cool thing is, is if you fly in at night and you see the lights. Oh, yeah. And the second cool thing about Vegas is when you get to leave. Yeah. You guys want to know everything there is to know about Vegas? Watch Casino. Yeah. That's yeah, it. that's a really good movie. It's the only movie I like that Sharon Stone is in. Because I don't like Mar Sharon Stone. Martin Scorsese directed, Robert De Niro, Sharon Stone, Joe Pesci. Great movie. Well, let's see. We've got, like, Ginger Sugarbush sums it up by saying 1.5 is what he's voted. He's ah, torn funny. between there being some more than one shooter and it being completely fake. So we've solved absolutely nothing, just like I said we would do <laughs> when we started talking about this. But I wanted to talk about it because we'd be remiss if we didn't discuss something that is so uh, conspiracy oriented. Yeah, yeah. And, and it, there again, is it's, it, something about this that's wrong. This isn't yeah. what they're telling us. We do no, know no. That. It's fallen. It's fallen apart way quicker than uh, than even I thought it would, because there's just. They couldn't cover up all the loose ends quick enough. There's something else going on here. There's something wrong. I don't think they should have chosen 
uh, Stephen Paddock. I don't think I don't think he he was. Oh, the first double leg choice. FPV says fear and loathing, and uh, IPS says the whole thing was fake, and uh, Limitless says I live in Vegas, part fake, but there were many deaths. Yeah. Define many. Four. Oh, you know what? Too many is one. So, yeah, one point five. I'm going to go with one point five, as our chat has said which is just pretty much a question mark. And Nathan Oakley sums it up by saying it was aliens. So nice. there you have it. That's good. All right. We are going to close this very dark chapter in, in, in life, in our time here on earth, and move on to something a little nicer. And that yes. would be you're going to Pasadena on Sunday. Tell us I about that. am going to Pasadena. I am going to a flat earth. Are you going to be a little old lady from Pasadena? No, and I did or not are use transgender rumors. No. I, boy, you call me old. <laughs> the, um, I'm not. You, in fact, I didn't use little the Beach Boys' "Little Old Lady from Pasadena." Is that the name of the song? Or is it just? Is that literally the whole name of the song? It the might be. Yeah. From Pasadena. I used uh, a remix of "California Dreamin." Oh yeah, I like that. The Mamas and the Papas. Mamas and the Papas, indeed. Mamas and the Papas, and it's a little before me. So not really. I, I mean, I remember them. I mean, even if in radio when you were around the age we are, it would be on radio when you were, you know, it would be an older song. But yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so I'm flying down on Saturday. The meetups on Sunday at the Luggage Room Pizzeria in Pasadena, and then I'm coming back on Monday. Nice. And they, they're they're bringing me out to it. It's like, all right, cool. I saw some hotel. Uh, oh, comment somewhere that said that there's no way they're paying for Mark Sargent's airfare and hotel to go. Oh out no, there. they absolutely yeah, did. And <laughs> honestly, the airfare airfare from Seattle to LA is it's very, cheap. very, very nice of them to do that. It is, but it's also very cheap. So <laughs> meaning meaning the airfare is super cheap. Like I could go into LAX for <sighs> dirt cheap. But I'm in, I'm going to Ontario because it's a uh, it's an easier drive because LAX you know you know driving in LA can be a pain in the ass but it's gonna be fun hopefully a lot of people will be there and I can't wait to meet everybody and shake hands and hear their stories and it'll be a nice little warm up for the conference coming up in Raleigh yes and let's move on to talk about that the conference I'm starting to get those butterfly feelings of excitement uh, we've got to, it's over thirty days but it's no longer sixty days away right. Right around the Thir corner. 35 days ish. Yeah. Sort of. Oh. It's going to. And you know, I haven't bought my plane ticket yet. Yeah, you got to buy your plane ticket. I'm going to do that tonight. I'm going to do that. It's because I bought my hotel ticket almost the day you and I were told that we were going to go. I forgot. Or not I forgot. hotel ticket. My hotel I, I, have to, I have to read this. What is um, it? This is, I, I did not send this to you, or maybe I did. I, I, I sent this to you in email. Mm. Uh, hang on one second. It is from because remember, the, so it's completely sold out, right? Yes. And so I mentioned on my thing last night. I go, if anybody wants to sell tickets, oh, you didn't email me this. Good. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is from, and I'll give you the guy's email address so you can email him directly, so we don't have to be the middleman. So if you do not have tickets yet, you will not get them from the main website. They are gone, 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 gone. However, there is a gentleman who cannot fly for a medical issue. And his name is, I won't read the whole email, but his name is Don. And you can email him at ddickhau at comcast.net. He has two general admission tickets. He will sell them to you. Just email him and he'll give you all the details. All right. Let me, uh, let me write that down so I can put it in the description box of this video. It was a kind of a complicated email address. DD. I C K. I C K. Sounds already hey. like it's a fake email. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, no. His name's his name's Don Dickhausen. Okay, good, good. D D I C K. H A U. H A U. At Comcast dot net. At Comcast. Comcast dot net. He's dot selling. Net. I will put that in the description box of this video. It'll probably be sold in an hour. Yeah, yeah, it might already. be. It's, so but, it's two tickets. So that's nice. Two, nice. two tickets. He can't, he cannot fly. He's got a medical thing. You know, sometimes you, the doctors say, yeah, you're not flying anywhere. And so, uh, David of all, all, all people, free people channel, uh, gave away two tickets to, to flat earth friends. I thought that was really, really, really nice. nice. Yes. That's awesome. There's some that's great. people so, in flat earth. Yes, there are. So, 
So if you are, for whatever reason, if you want to sell your tickets and you're not going to scalp them outside. I want to sell my ticket. <laughs> Wait, you don't have a ticket. I know. I know. <laughs> and that the, is uh, something that I do have to say. And uh, the airfare and the hotel accommodations and the food to go to this for those who are presenting conference presenters like myself, we're paying for all of that. But we did get to get in free. So that yes, was nice. that was kind of cool. Get a little bonus. Uh, and for those who are wondering, we'd receive no profits, no matter how much it makes or how much it loses. It's not the proceeds going to those who are the speakers. I get to get in free so people can torture me for an hour on stage. That's fun. So bring your rotted tomatoes. No, no, don't give me any ideas. No, I'm doing a night. I'm doing a cool little Q and A and an audio and video test thing, and we're gonna ham it up for the cameras a bit, and it'll be fun. Nice. It's yeah. going to be so fun. And I, you know, when you have a big event coming up, we've all had these experiences in life, and it's the brides have this experience. I just went through my niece getting married uh, recently. They There's a, so much planning, like a year's planning to go into something like that. And then the event is upon you. And then if you're a primary focus of the event, like my niece was, you don't even enjoy the event. It's almost whips by in a moment. And I want all of us who are there whether you're a presenter or not, to really be in the moment when we're there and really realize what's happening. Doesn't that happen to all of us in this movement? I don't know if you don't want to call it a movement, but for the moment we will. In this awakening, you're listening to a video or you're in a live chat and you say, wow, you step back and you're, it, this is mind blowing what we're talking about. And we're talking about it as if it's nothing that we don't live on a globe and that we've never been to the moon and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And there's music that's being created. It gives you a thrill. And that thrill, that moment for those who are going to this event or are going to be watching it live streaming, we have to just enjoy it because it's, it's really, it's special. And to get to the point we are now where we've got this U.S. Uh, conference and then the U.K. convention coming up and the European convention coming up after that, Right. It shows how far we've come. It's true. And congratulations to all of us. We are still here. Nobody has provided proof that we live on a globe. I mean, many have tried, but uh, Russia, Russia Today did try very recently. If you didn't already see their 360, you know, because the first attempt, they were just shot down to hell because they, they released a video on YouTube. It was like a a 360 thing and they said oh yeah it's all cgi or most of it's cgi it was like why would you say it's the first thing now they released a new one if you don't succeed at first try try again I mean yeah exactly a new one and yeah you can spin around but it is so unbelievably distorted that i wouldn't give it any any credence at all why? but they actually when they released it they said here's here they actually said this one's for flat earthers they actually said that on the their so front was page. it taken aboard the iss by the russian uh, contingent or supposedly it was taken by the russians outside of the iss so check it out when you get a chance tell me what you think well we we knew it was a matter of time before they did that oh yeah they're gonna have to try something so you know they are worried about us. I Good know job. that there's the naysayers who say they don't care about you. NASA laughs at you. NASA doesn't even know you guys exist. But the reality no, is true. they have answered. They've, as they say, as the kids say, they've clapped back to everything we've done. And this is right. one such example. Yeah, it took them. It took them several months to to figure out this one, but. Well, probably because they couldn't figure out how to do it. They had to build things in order to do it. And number two, they don't want to look too eager, like make it too obvious what they're trying to do. Right. Right. Oh, by the way, my only regret for the concert or the uh, convention is that I will not be able to see myself live. Uh, Kanye? Are you there? There you go. Kanye. <laughs> yep. <laughs> only he was serious when he said it. That's what killed yes. me. Because I can't, he can't be in two places at once. He actually can't watch himself well, sing on stage. He, doesn't he, Jesus? I mean, you know, if you're calling yourself that, then well, you know. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I know. Uh, let me go back into the live chat and see what's going on. We've got other things to talk about as well, emails to read, and all of that sort of stuff. Um, Hori Sheet Show is in here as well, talking about things with D Marble, and <laughs> D Marble is kind of sarcastically saying to. 
Jovan Trendmaker. Yeah, we're a cult. We're trying to wake people up from generations of deception. <laughs> yeah, if you want to call that a cult, then 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 go ahead. Uh, DITRH is here as well, and Bob from Globusters and Daniel Reza, and uh, a lot of cool people in here. I do appreciate everyone being here. Toto Cults. And Puzzle Master, hey, Billy, how are you? He put out a very interesting video the other day. So if you have not subscribed to Puzzle Master, please do. Again, like I'm jealous of his channel name and I'm jealous of his hair. Yeah, he has awesome hair. Does a lot of things on astrology. It is. <laughs> I interviewed him. It's on my channel. So look for Puzzle, Ooh, look for puzzle Master. Uh, Persian Scribe as well. And... <laughs> Persian scribe has a funny comment that says, Mark will be speaking behind chicken wire at FEIC like the Blues <laughs> Brothers in a country western band. <laughs> and what was the main song that the Blues Brothers sung behind that chicken wire? Oh. Rawhide. Ooh. Go for it. You tell us. No, Rawhide. That was the, that oh, was the yeah. name of the song. Okay. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, earlier I had said, if you want to call this a movement or not, because a lot of people make fun of us calling it a movement because it's not moving. But, uh, uh, D Marvel says, Oh, it's a movement. All right. Uh, hashtag flat earth offensive or F E offensive. Yeah, D Marvel's gotten mainstream traction. Don't say that it's not a movement. He's, he's in the thick of it. Yeah, he certainly is. And he is so like, we all are valuable in all of this. We all yeah. are. Even if you've never made a video, you have a channel and you comment on other people's videos. Even if you don't have a channel and you watch videos, because we know there's a lot of people who don't have channels who watch videos. I know it from personal experience because before I started a channel, I was watching Flat Earth videos. You don't need a channel to watch videos. Um, you, you need it to thumbs up or to, you know, have a collection of your favorite channels in a subscription form. But every single person is valuable in this. Um, even the people who are trolling us are valuable. Sometimes the trolls, I think uh, DITRH has said this, give us the best ideas for making new videos uh, to, to answer to their questions, a new approach, a new way of looking at things. So let's see what else is going on. Mm -hmm. I've got a lot of people still talking about the shooting in Vegas, although it's tempting to go back into those comments and read more. I just want to kind of move on from it. Hey, I mean, look, let the dust settle on this thing. We can yeah. talk about it next week after somebody comes up with, seriously, uh, you wait. If, if it's all about money, now that somebody's already, not to, not to go too far into this, but if, if an employee of that hotel has already dug up the room service receipt right. and probably told his friends, dude, I made like $5,000 off that. So did the shooter tip? Uh, That's the question I want to know. <laughs> like, oh, that's funny. But other people are going to. Other people are going to be like, what else can I grab? And you know, the, the hotel try to lock it down as best they can. But... Now, has the transcript come out or video come out of the, the Filipino girlfriend? And I only say Filipino, uh, identifying her by that due to the fact that that's what the press is calling her. And also because supposedly the shooter sent her back to the Philippines during the time he was going to do the shooting. But now she's been interviewed. Has that transcript come out? I do not know. I do not think so. I have not seen it. And I was pretty much up to I mean, to we date know what it's going before. to say. He was a wonderful man. I loved him very much. I never would have thought he would have done well, something. Well, or are they going to try to do or the whole... he was crazy. He was mad. He beat me. He was always the... saying, I want everyone to die. All right. Hang on. So there's you a comment. <laughs> I, I Well, no, I will. Uh, well, yeah, remember, you got to corroborate the, the sister's story. The sister, they're now spinning it to where the sister says, oh, yeah, she was sent away so as not to be involved in the horror. Like she had pre, like she had knowledge in advance. Like, well, if she had knowledge in advance, she'll immediately be arrested. But I don't well, think it's going to happen. being sent away without knowledge. Just like, honey, why don't you go back and visit your family for a little while? Okay. I, I, I've got to answer a question in chat. I don't usually yeah. do this, but it says, ask Mark about the ransom movie idea that the caller mentioned yesterday. I forget the ransom movie idea. Uh, I mean, I've seen ransom, the Mel Gibson thing, and actually it's tied to the ransom movie idea is more tied to the John Monet Ramsey thing because there was a guy that worked at a video store in Boulder, Colorado, where I was at a college student who said that just before the week before this thing happened, that thing happened with John Monet Ramsey. That's the movie they rented. 
and you know, that was that was the year it was a brand yeah. new movie that year and they played out almost exactly like the movie because most people aren't original enough to come up with their own plots i wonder if the supposed shooter rented movies the night before what was his last meal i mean this is all that assuming guy, he's real uh, again i don't think he had anything to do with it i think he was just a gambler in the wrong place at the wrong, wrong place. time that's scary because any of us could be the patsy including mm. somebody named patricia but it's no, no women no you know, know, like, like for example, it's so far. You are not going to sit down there and crank out a thousand rounds. Although sometimes it felt like it. <laughs> you'd you'd hold actually. I you'd hold the gun and go. Which end of the bullets come out of again? No, I wouldn't. That I am not a firearms expert by any means. And uh, that's good. Now, you actually said that, and I believed you. Yeah. Awesome. Now, uh, I did say we didn't want to talk about this, and here we are. And I think I even I know. I'm still going to read. I'm still going to read the Russia TV awards thing. Yes, uh, but I do want to. Since we did talk about the girlfriend, yes, her uh, public uh, uh, interview has come out about 45 minutes ago. The transcripts? Um, the, uh, yeah, uh, let's see what they say. Uh, her name is Mary Lou Danley. She says, quote, I knew Stephen Paddock as a kind, caring, quiet man. He never said anything to me or took any action that I was aware of that I understood in any way to be a warning that something horrible like this was going to happen. Uh, which means at the very least she lawyered up and a lawyer said right just if you basically he says if you even hint that there's anything going on the um well isn't president trump going to vegas right now or maybe he's already there oh he's already there yeah because yeah, and he went there from puerto rico he's had a busy and he's saying i can tell you it's a very sick man he was a very demented person you will know very soon we're looking very very hard man cnn is so pushing the gun control thing and not and again i don't want to complain too much and i don't want to belabor this too much but did you watch the jimmy kimmel thing mm, no i partially did and it just looked so fake i didn't watch the rest Good. of it get watching him cry on camera fake is, crying is so easy uh, to spot yeah it was not it was not enjoyable at all Supposedly, this guy had no criminal history himself. Uh, you know, no again, ties to terrorism you, groups. You, if that's what makes me think, again, and he gave his a, girlfriend a hundred thousand dollars. It's a sloppy. Well, well, who knows what he owed her? The maybe I just think the backstory is just so sloppy. Normally, they have everything ready, everything ready, and even the brother is just. The brother Terrible. that looked fake, horribly fake. CBS, and you know how conservative they are. They were on camera saying, you know, they were in the comments going, this interview is rambling and weird. Because he wouldn't get, he wouldn't leave. Normally it's like, okay, I could give five minutes and then I'm out of here, right? You usually have a guy next to you, a lawyer, somebody to keep you in check. He's like running, pushing 40 minutes. Just talking, 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 going, seriously, dude? No. All right, this time... We really are going to stop talking about it. And you know I'll read something in chat later and come back to this topic. But I'm, I'm going to say at this moment, we're going to take a little break from talking about it. Oh, and and I, by the way, I, yes, I did watch Louder with Crowder. That somebody mentioned that, Street mentioned that, Louder, the critique of Jimmy Kimmel. <laughs> and I'm not, he, I'm, I never heard that guy before, but he was just tearing into him. Awakened now, Mind is in here saying it's totally fake and Kimmel can go yeah f himself etc sorry but but crowder's argument was was pretty good he's like look you're a comedian you're paid to entertain so what are you doing you you were yeah i know he got ahead of steam it's like okay i'm gonna promote for my kid i'm gonna do the whole healthcare thing it's like oh you know what i'm gonna double down i'm gonna go for gun rights come on hmm. anyway. all right uh, I think that there's something that we haven't talked about before, and you talk about it on Strange World enough so that I said to myself when I was listening last night, you know, we should bring this up during our show. And that is uh, Kathy Dunson and the, the Flat Earth Challenge. And you've got the right. email. You explain that, and then I'm going to go look in my email and see if there's anything interesting to read. Sure. If anyone ha knows anybody in the academic community which thinks that they can prove without a shadow of the, a doubt the global, I'm sorry, the globe Earth, you could email me. Well, you know what? Email Kathy directly. Her name's Kathy Dunson. She's tied to Zen Garcia, who is on Truth Frequency Radio. Uh, he has a show called Secrets Revealed. Anyway, you can email her at P-E-R-E-L-A-N-D-R-A-77 at gmail.com. That's perelandra77 at gmail.com. And she will try to set up some debate. 
I don't think it's going to happen. I mean, the Jeffrey Grupp challenge has been out there for so long that if I actually called Jeffrey, he might say, Mark who? Yeah, because exactly. it's been a long time. Nobody's and and they can't it, for the the very reason that Robbie it's Davis. Not, it's not just him. It's anybody that would be debated. There's yeah. no challenge. There's no takers out there aside no. from some globe believers or globe lovers out and there. The big reason is from what Robbie said, which is that flat Earth has three aspects to it and they're all completely different and no one person can go against all three one is the conspiracy side like me connect the dots mm -hmm. where you know i i connect some dots it's like you got to find a way to just to, to dismiss all of it the second side is the scientific side which mm -hmm. is the people that do experiments the laser and the light third you know, is the religious side and not is everybody is side. there but so it plays a you, role for many no no one person is well round enough, enough in the scientific community to go against all three. You might have somebody go against the science side. You might have, again, one of those three. Yeah, we've seen debunkers come against one of those three, but they can't go against the other two. And so they don't want to. Well, it's like it's a spiritual awakening yes. on no matter where you're coming from. It's about who you are and where you came from and what right. your place in the world is and what all of this means. And how important that you are, how important you really are. Agreed. And that this is no joke. Um, this is interesting. Have you been following uh, Big Dread uh, from You Been Exposed, talking about the popping up out of nowhere, multiple enclosed security towers around New York, uh, about 50 feet tall, that are black and silver, and they've got all kinds of secu security surveillance on them? No, I haven't seen it. Sounds super that. conspiratorial and crazy, but he's been talking about it. A few other people have emailed me about that. Um, so that's something yeah. to look into. What are they doing? Does have anything to do with 5G? Um, possibly. Don't know. Got a couple of other emails in here. Um, mm -hmm. We've got an email from Chris who says, Hello, Patricia. I was watching you on the Sun and Moon group yesterday. And he made a great point about veganism and flat earthism proponents and how there's a simil similar argument and that being, quote, how dare you not choose what I believe? I'm sure that you can think of a few other choices where the same argument we would be just as valid and really it is them questioning their own choices in life and then using their own bias as a tool for confirmation that they made the right choice. So uh, he also was talking about how he had an interesting conversation on discus.com debating the flat earth and he said he threw a left hook by bringing up the big bang argument of which came first after the big bang the gravity to create mass or the mass to create gravity and uh, the person he was talking to began to fume and he says he was rather uh, interested in the fact that he claimed the scientists or astro priests are now claiming there was no bang in the Big Bang. Did you see that story come out recently? No. Yeah, just expansion. So uh, whatever he said, what? And so he said, he, Chris said he did some research and a bunch of pop science websites are now trying to promote the idea of there being no bang in the Big Bang. So it's just trying, it's just them trying to uh, adapt what they say to the way people are thinking now to make it all seem more believable. So yeah, I yeah. was I was more focused on the Elon Musk rocket plane scenario where people can fly from the United States to China in 30 minutes and it'll cost the same price as an economy seat. And and I was thinking he's pulling stuff so far up his ass at this point. Uh, it's it's hard for me to understand how far he has to reach because it, it, it wasn't just that yeah, we've heard the rocket plane story for years and years. Every few years, somebody says, oh, yeah, in the future, we'll have planes that can travel long distances in a very, very quick amount of time. And at the same time, it's like, OK, because we had the Concorde <laughs> and it was really expensive and they ended up abandoning it and you could not fly it over land because of the sonic boom. You had to fly it only over the ocean. And eventually it was discontinued. So why are you bringing it up? I remember when I first started on Flat Earth and I was only doing things on Facebook, posting on Facebook. I didn't have a channel yet. I wasn't 
even brave enough to even consider yet. But right. I was trying my wings as we all do when we first find out about this little posts on Facebook, talking to my family a little, and then standing back and waiting for the explosion of anger, which always came. And uh, I was talking about exactly what you're what you're talking about now. Elon Musk. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> the Concord. Yeah, the Concord. Uh, and people were saying to me, well, people have seen the carve of the earth from the Concord. Oh, right. And I remember going and searching like, oh, my God, you know, early in flat earth, you're you're almost waiting for somebody to debunk you because right. uh -huh. that's how it is until you're in it for a while and you realize it can't be debunked. And I was looking and searching, you know, Google, you know, looking. And of course, if I had found proof that we live on a sphere, totally, I would have been, I mean, real proof i would have not been a flat earther because i am looking for the truth and i found photos from the concord but nothing showed me the globe beneath us as the you know beneath the passengers nothing but that did throw me for a while people saying that the reason that they and and, and some globe believers have come back at me with that the reason they they canceled discontinued the concord was because it would show the curve of the earth I don't even understand that. The flat earthers had something to do with that then is what you're saying? The the Concorde, by the way, I did not realize until just now, you learn something new every day, that the Concorde did have a cruising altitude of pushing 60,000 feet. Yeah, but so, I never saw a photo of a globe. Just no. saw the flat horizon. That's it. Right. It would have been fun to fly on that. I bet there's somebody who watches our shows who's been on the Concorde. Maybe. Mach 2.0. Roughly. Charles has uh, messaged me and asked me, do I know of anyone arranging another Flat Earth meetup in Houston or Dallas? He would like to go to one. So if you're organizing a Flat Earth meetup in Houston or Dallas, uh, message me at mistier at gmail.com and I will pass your information to Charles. I don't want to give his email address out here because he didn't say I could. But I was thinking that maybe Alex Aquarius, who lives around Houston and myself, should get together and do a very casual Flat Earth meetup. You know, not a fancy one like I've had before. Just a, hey, we're going to be at X place at X time. Come by, buy your own drinks. Alex, we need to get together on that. Um, what else is going on? We have Donna G who wrote me, who said, because she knows I'm vegan, that she's having a dilemma whether to drink and eat soy, tofu, or not. She says when her children were growing up, she did eat and drink soy, but then read things about the problems with using soy and how it affects our bodies. So for decades, she did not use it. She's now thinking maybe to use it, not sure if it causes any problems with the estrogen and progesterone thing. So she asked me what I personally think about concerns and dangers of using soy. Huh. Well, I don't think anything in large quantities is good. Um, I also think that from personal experience, I've never had any problem, but I don't use large quantities of soy. The only thing I really ever have is soy milk in coffee and it's organic. So that does help a little bit. Soy is a highly GMO crop, but if you get organic, it's not GMO. So I'd say, unless you have a problem with your estrogen, progesterone that you've determined or a doctor has determined for you, that it can be okay when used in a moderate way. But there's so many other alternatives to that. You don't really need soy. Tofu, yeah, that's hard to substitute because it can be used for lots of things, especially with Asian cooking. But when it comes to plant milks, there are so many other things you can try. There's hemp, there's almond, there's coconut, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So um, try it and see how you do with it or continue avoiding it. But personally, I've never had an ill effect at all. But then again, I don't have any issues when it comes to that. So thank you, Donna, for writing me about that. Let's see what is going on. What other things are going on? Just want to say hello to all the people who've sent me. A lot of people are sending me all sorts of emails about things that aren't really the kind I'd read on the air, but just very nice things. So interesting. We'll see what this is. Somebody named Lucy Goosey who wrote me, who says, I've been documenting the fallout from chemtrails and people have thought it was spider webs, but these long web filaments are on the ground every morning and always drape north to south. So check out Lucy Goosey, G-O-O-S-E-Y, all run together in one word if you want to see a video on that. Chem spider webs. I don't know how much you're well-versed in the whole chemtrail thing. Um, they exist. 
Yeah, that's about it. Do. Yeah, me too. I don't know about the spider webs. I've seen people talking about them. I've even seen video of them. But does that mean that they are what the person saying they are? It, it, you know what I'm trying to say? Are they what they right. think it is or not? See if anybody in the chat has anything to say about the spider webs, chemtrail spider webs. Um, this is interesting from Brandon Esteban back to the soy thing who says they don't need to put Roundup on soy because bugs and animals won't touch it. Uh, contraire, uh, that's not true. I mean, soy is in all sorts of products. I would imagine it's even in some pet foods, dry kibble pet foods, and animals do eat it. So, yeah. um, Hide Charm of Fear and Fans of Fame says, we're living in a deep soy state. Do not ingest it. It is an estrogen and is one cause of the recent feminizing of men. It gives women too much estrogen and causes cancers. Well, I don't have any cancer issues at all, and I don't think I have too much estrogen. So for me, it didn't have an effect. But you know when people say everybody's different when it comes to health? In general, yeah, well, there's variations, but generally we are humans and we're very much the same. But some people do have issues deeper than others when it comes to that. Um, let's see, someone's asking for a wrench. I will add another moderator. <laughs> so um, let's see what else is going on. You don't really ever have soy at all. No. But you did have, when you were here, did I give you coconut cheese at all? Yes, you did. Coconut milk cheese. That's yes. not bad. Oh, yeah, no. you had it in a, in a cream cheese sort of spread. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think you would have known it was anything different other than just a kind of cream cheese that you never had. Um, yeah. Well, anything else that you've got coming up, aside from you're going to Pasadena on Sunday, conference uh, coming up? The I'm doing a radio station down in Seattle uh, when I get back from L.A. That's next week. Wait, Go you're ahead. going to the radio I'm actually station. going to the station. I haven't done That's that in quite cool. a while. Now, you should film yourself or have somebody film you in the radio station talking. Tempting if I could pull that off, but eh, I'm not. I'm not too worried about it. I've done so many at this point. I know, but, but we've never seen you in a radio station with like a DJ there saying, "Tell us how you came to this conclusion, Mr. Sergeant." I'll tell you what, I will ask them if uh, they may. They may shoot it anyway, and if they shoot it, uh, I'll I'll get a copy. So very cool. Yeah. And are these people who are flat Earth friendly? Curious or anti? They're curious. Right. The the lead, the guy that's in, that initially pitched the story to the station. I think he's more pro. Mm -hmm. But I'm yeah, like anybody. There, I if he try, I don't think it's going to be a hit piece. Let's so they contacted way. you. In fact, every single interview you've ever done, everybody contacts me. Somebody contacted you. You didn't contact. Them. Yep. But that there's no shame in contacting radio stations if you feel that you yourself are a very good spokesperson for flat Earth and you can answer questions well and it. it you can I know don't... it in your mind, but trying to express it verbally is not the easiest thing. So if you're good at that, contacting a, a, a radio station is not a bad way to go. If somebody wants to contact on my behalf, I will never do it on my own because right, right. it's all just happened on its own. Right. But it's, yeah, in this case, in fact, I think it's a like a talk radio station on top of it. Mm. So Yeah, anybody who's really good at public speaking... Uh, D Marble <laughs> and many there others. Contacting a radio station is a great idea. Yeah. Just get more traction out there. Uh, sure. Some people feel that we shouldn't be attempting to push it into mainstream because mainstream's bad, evil. They're the controllers. Uh, they're the ones that are uh, keeping the truth from us. And it's it already really do us harm, but it already is in mainstream. It's better yeah, for it's, us to get out the truth as opposed to, oh, the earth rises up or whatever the flat earth society is going to say. It's already in the mainstream. It's just how much they want to let it saturate. They're controlling the pace of it right now when it comes to mainstream. So what do you predict is going to happen to Flat Earth in the eyes of mainstream post the very first Flat Earth conference in November in Raleigh? Do you think there's going to be a, a bunch of so stories I think there's going to be. I think there's going to be... They're going to test the waters. It's going to be once they show that many people involved science is going to have to respond in some sort of way and they're going to be and the great thing about it is that with social media they will be able to it's a, it'll be the giant litmus test 
it'll be everywhere. So then they can monitor, okay, what does everybody think of this large group? Are they all crazy? Are they, you know, I think it'll go well. I'm, I'm being optimistic, but at the same time I do, I think it's going to go well. I'm just kind of curious to see the, the big unknown factor. The big X factor is who will show up at this thing from the media. Will you send your rookies? You know, so oh, send, send Tommy and, and Joanne, she'll the, the, you know, whatever interns, or will they actually, you, or do you send your heavy hitters down there just for curiosity? Will someone like Conan show up? It's like, I'm you because everyone's expecting the craziness, but yes. at the same time, so I don't know, you know, it could be a weird mix of people, but I know it'll be covered. It's well, we too, it's too tempting. Of, it's too tempting not to. We have a weird mix of people within the world of flat earth. There's somebody right. here. I'm not going to mention their name. They're asking, why does a flat earther cover one eye and stack records in a pyramid? Well, I don't have one eye covered, by the way, but I, my bangs are a little long, so I've had to push them to the side. I do need to trim them, and my records are not stacked in a pyramid. Let me show you. How do you this stack is, records in a pyramid? Oh, you mean those records? Those are not a pyramid, Mr. You know who you are in the live chat, just trying to cause trouble. They're just stacked like that because that's how many albums the Smiths had. And I wanted to put them into a nice looking stack that also would show in the camera as opposed to like straight up and down or all across and fit the size of space that I have here. Not everything is a conspiracy. And we all need to know that too. It's another thing. Sometimes when you look at some of the things, let's just call people trolls, then there's people who are actually genuinely curious about things and ask questions. This was more of a trolley question because they said I'm covering one eye, which I'm not. As you can see, I'm trying to push it out of my eye the entire time I've been doing the show. Uh, for those who are actually trolling and trying to create havoc, people like that, you have to realize that not everything is a hidden secret message. Not everything is. And so when all of us are looking and trying to decode events, that we are going to call hoaxes or false flags. Yes, we, we do know that they do those sorts of things a lot, but sometimes some things aren't, sometimes things just happen to be 33. People happen some, to be 33 years old or, the, you know, et cetera. The, the Freud example is probably the best one. Sometimes, sometimes a, cigar a cigar is just, just a, cigar. a cigar. So I'm not discounting anything anybody says about something and I'm not, trying to discourage you from looking into everything. But sometimes I've heard people say that this Wurlitzer jukebox, which is, you know, from the seventies vintage is representing the dome and I'm pushing the dome because there's a jukebox behind me. So how about that? It just was something I inherited when my parents died. Yeah. It's as easy as that, you know, sometimes. So when we look at other things, we should always remember, but sometimes we might be going too far. Pull yourself back. Realize that, yes, sometimes something could happen for 33 seconds. Sometimes, sure. Yeah. <laughs> Very infrequently, though. I was about to say, <laughs> the, the, the George Carlin's thing was, you know, don't believe. He goes, there's one rule which I don't really waver from, and that is don't believe anything. And he doubled up and he goes, anything, all caps that the government tells you. And my, my quote is, you know, the, it's a saying that I've held for a number of years, which is don't believe anything at face value. Mm -hmm. Question everything. But sometimes you might be trying to provoke and hurt someone with your questioning. Mm -hmm. And when you feel yourself doing that, step back and ask yourself, what am I trying to do? What's oh, my real hey, motivation? Trust is a tough thing to come by in the conspiracy world. Yes, it is. Probably true. the toughest group, toughest, toughest crowd. Yes. Hello to Monique and Arwin who are in here as well. And uh, DITRH says, I don't think she knows I started that. So maybe David was the one saying I'm covering my eye. You're not covering no, I'll my... be seeing you at the conference and I'll give you what for. <laughs> Really? <laughs> that doesn't date you at all. Anyway, I think that's it. I think we've I think we've done a show. Really? I didn't I don't get to one. read I don't get to read my thing. Oh, yeah. We have time. I don't <gasps> know about that. You don't want me to read it. Yes, I do. No, no, no. I don't have to read it. That's no, fine. I do. 
Please do. Do. Even, I can mention it if you don't want me to no, read no, no, it. No, 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 I do, I do. I you forgot. forgot, didn't you? I was too concerned with the whole everything's a conspiracy thing on a conspiracy show on YouTube. <laughs> oh, this, well, okay. So if you guys are looking real quick, this this won't take long. As I make a shape of a pyramid with my no. hands, wait. No, don't, don't do that. <laughs> That's the, if you're looking, if you type in Flat Earth into Google and you click on news and you set the filter to today, you'll see a story that came out of Russia this morning. And I surprised me, which is called Flat Fallout Over Flat Earth Theory Hits Russia's Emmy TV Awards. And goes a little something like this. The Emmy Awards, the American Emmy Awards, stirred controversy last month with politically charged speeches and comedy routines, many targeting U.S. President Donald Trump. In Russia, meanwhile, that country's analogous, analogous, whatever. Analogous? Whatever. Russia's... <laughs> Russia's Emmy Awards show has triggered ridicule and outrage after its trophy for best educational program was handed to the host of a recent show giving credence to the theory that the earth is flat. Igor Prokopenko, a television it's just host... all about words we can't pronounce, I think. No, no, I, I think I'm okay. A television host with the national... I'll just slip into a bad Russian accent. Uh, RN TV network accepting the honor at the October 3rd TEFI awards ceremony in Moscow for his show Military Secrets. But it was another of his productions, the most shocking hypothesis, that prompted widespread mockery and hand wringing. That program's episode last week, titled But the Earth is Flat, delivered a 45 minute exploration of the flat earth theory, featuring dramatic music and interviews with purported experts purveying the preposterous claim. Wow, through a quite a few peas in there. So what is the actual truth? A narrator asked at the end of the program. The program itself was widely lampooned after it aired. It seems there was never, has never been fake news like this. Spoiler, the earth is round, the Russian news portal Medusa wrote on Facebook. But the criticism of what many suggested was evidence of Russia's intellectual degradation intensified after Prokopenko accepted his TFI. Sorry, T-E-F-I. I don't know what it stands for, and I don't want to. Political analyst and former Kremlin insider Gleb Pavlovsky noted on Facebook that the award was given on the same day that three U.S. scientists won the Nobel Prize in physics for their discovery of gravitational waves. A member of Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny campaign team noted on Twitter that the award came one day before the 60th anniversary of the Soviet Union's launch of the world's first artificial satellite, Sputnik 1, into the Earth's orbit. Forgive us, Sputnik 1, we've pissed everything away, the tweet said. And another Twitter user posted an image of Soviet cosmonaut Yuri uh, Gergerin. Gergerin? The first human in orbit, smiling as he holds a telephone. The caption reads, Hi, future generation. How are you there in 2017? Are you flying to Mars? In a subsequent image, Gagarin's smile uh, has relaxed, and the caption reads, Who is flat? It's weird. Uh, and then basically goes on about people just ripping him for this. And But he says, for his part, Prokopenko has said that his programs aren't educational in nature, but rather an attempt to give viewers a chance to exercise their constitutional right to any information, including the fantastical and humorous. Accepting the award on October 3rd, he, he suggested his shows are aimed at boosting the ratings of educational programming. And that's why, at times, the earth is flat, he said. And so it, the TFI... At times? I don't know. Maybe it's a translation thing. The TF, TEFI awards also face criticism for honoring state media boss and TV presenter Dmitry Kislyov for his weekly political and news analysis of Vesti Nadelli. And so let's, see, let's see if there's anything else interesting about that. But it's been around for a while. The award was founded in 1994 by the Russian Television Academy. So the short version of this is that this thing, the Flat Earth has already won awards wow. in, in another country. So will the United States, if you're listening out there, producers, and you know who you are, will the United States follow suit and do uh, their own mainstream television show regarding Flat Earth? I hope so, because it worked in Russia. Well, um, I wanted to look this up, and here we go. I won't play. Analogous. You hear it? Analogous. 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 
I'm never going to use that word. Neither will I. And it's got only, A-N-A-L in the very start. So. And let's end the show on this story, and I won't read it, but this is from the News and Observer, and it was released this morning. Say It's about the conference. It shows the, the nice postcard. And it says, they believe the earth is flat, and they're coming to carry with a collection of conspiracies by Josh Schaefer. And he goes into all sorts of fun stuff about how we're coming. It's not a belief. We don't specialize in beliefs. Nope. So let's go one last wait. look into the I can't we either into the live chat and see what's going on. Uh, let's see. Ginger Sugarbush is laughing at my playing of the. You know there are words that I come across when reading like that, and you kind of stumble. I I stumbled over it. Gagarin. That's how they always pronounce it. Gagarin. Gagarin. But when you when Gagarin. you read the the spelling of it, it's not. It doesn't look like Gagarin. That's how people are talking about your fake glasses, which you're not wearing today. Oh, right. Sorry. Yeah. Martin Leakey says, Patricia, did you see you and Mark in the News and Observer? I covered it. What's the News and Observer? Oh, was that the... Um, Martin, the story, what is the, that? Is that the story I just uh, looked up? Maybe, that is the News we weren't and in Observer. That. I don't see... I don't see you in here. <laughs> Charm Fear says we're crazy. Well, yes, indeed, sometimes we are. Hello to Hoodwink33. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Puzzle Master is laughing that I looked it up, the word up, because he says that's what kind of inferring that's what an Aquarius would do. Yeah, I want to <laughs> <I wanna> learn. <laughs> that's funny. Something. Well, that wraps up our show. We've learned a new word, and uh, we all kind of think that the event in Vegas was not what we've been told. So nope. there we go. There you go. All right. Well, I'll talk to you again shortly, I'm sure. On Friday, I'm going to be reading a couple more chapters of the book Brave New World by Aldous Huxley. And that should be fun. So join me at 6 p.m. Eastern time. Same channel. Same place. Same redhead. Same face. It's <laughs> good. And Mark, until we meet again, I'll let you close the show with the final word. Words. Keep it flat.